All right, well, good morning, everyone. It is uh, great to be with you today. Today, we are going to be reading in uh, our February 4th reading, um, Exodus chapter 10. So we're coming near the end of this face-off that, uh, that God is having with, uh, with Pharaoh. Um, but I did want to mention, so yesterday I mentioned the, the fact that uh, each of these plagues really is, is an attack on, on not just Pharaoh and the Egyptians, but it's an attack um, on these false gods that the Egyptians had. And the Egyptians had a number of false gods, uh, but most of them were over various um, aspects of, um, you know, of their living. And so, so for example, uh, the Egyptian god Hat uh, was was depicted as a cow. And so we see the attack on the livestock and, uh, you know, what God does with the livestock there. Uh, Nephthys was uh, the river goddess. And so we see the, the water turning to blood. Um, that's a very clear uh, um, example of God saying to them, um, I am the God over, over even the river, the Nile River, that you are worshiping this, this God over it. Horus was a god that was often depicted as a falcon or a, a, a human child, and um, that that god was um, linked to the sun and the sky. And uh, you know, notice what God does with the you know causing things to be dark and uh, um, you know the uh, controlling even the nature, uh, showing that He's got control over lightning and over um, hail and all of those things. And then you have um, Isis, who was the, uh, the the goddess who was supposed to be the wife of Osiris. Um, Isis was the goddess um, of the underworld, and she was supposed to be the protector of the dead. And uh, so, so you see her often depicted in movies, um, you know, protecting uh, with m mummies and that type of thing. Um, Osiris the, was the god of the underworld um, and uh, uh, controlled the cycles of the, of the Nile. Um, Anubis was uh, um, the god of the dead, also depicted as a man god, um, man with a with a dog head. Often, um, uh, uh, Kansu was the god of the moon. Um, he's often the god that's depicted as with a human body with a falcon head, and also is depicted as a snake. Uh, so remember, the whole thing started out with God uh, having Moses have a staff that turned into a snake. Um, and that that swallows up the other snakes that their magicians um, had. Um, Emmon was the sun god. Uh, Ra is often also seen as the sun god. And Hat was the fish god. You remember how you know the, all the fish in the Nile died when the river turned you know um, to blood. And so uh, there are these very clear indicators that God is you know setting the record straight straight for the Egyptians that He is the God that is the true God, not all of their fake deities that they had. Um, and so thought you would be interested in hearing some of their names and uh, what they did. Okay, today's February fourth, so we have the plague of locusts coming up and. Uh, Exodus chapter 10 says, the Lord, Then the Lord said to Moses, Return to Pharaoh and make your demands again. I have, made, I have made him and his officials stubborn so I can display my miraculous signs among them. I've also done it so you can tell your children and grandchildren about how I made a mockery of the Egyptians and about the signs I displayed among them. And so you will know that I am the Lord. See, what Again, it's because he's he's trying to get the Egyptian, he's the Israelites. Is, he said, "I've I've done it, so you, I, you can tell your children and grandchildren, so that they don't repeat this mistake of worshiping these false gods, um, and that I've made a mockery of all of those Egyptian gods, right? And about the signs I displayed among them, so you will know that I am the Lord. So that's an important one. You can underline verse two there, um, in uh, in chapter ten. Because God's intent is to, uh, to protect his children from false worship in the future. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. How long will you refuse to submit to me? Let my people go so they can worship me. If you refuse, watch out. For tomorrow I will bring a swarm of locusts on your country. They will cover the land so that you won't be able to see the ground. They will devour what is le what little is left of your crops after the hailstorm, including all the trees growing in the fields. They will overrun your palaces and the homes of your officials and all the houses in Egypt. Never in the history of Egypt have your ancestors seen a plague like this one. And with that, Moses turned and left Pharaoh. Pharaoh's officials now came to Pharaoh and appealed to him. How long will you let this man hold us hostage? Let the men go to worship the Lord their God. 
Don't you realize that Egypt lies in ruins? So Moses and Aaron were brought back to the Pharaoh. All right, he told them, go and worship the Lord your God, but who exactly will be going with you? Moses replied, we will all go, young and old, our sons and daughters and our flocks and herds. We must all join together in celebrating a festival to the Lord. Pharaoh retorted, the Lord will certainly need to be with you if I let you if I let you take your little ones. I can see through your evil plan. Never. Only the men may go and worship the Lord, since that is what you requested. And Pharaoh threw them out of the palace. Then the Lord said to Moses, raise your right hand, ra raise your hand over the land of Egypt to bring on the locusts. Let them cover the land and devour every plant that survived the hailstorm. So Moses raised his staff over Egypt, and the Lord caused an east wind to blow over the land all that day and through the night. And when morning arrived, the east wind had brought the locust, and the locust swarmed over the whole land of Egypt, settling in dense swarms from one end of the country to the other. It was the worst locust plague in Egyptian history, and there has never been another one like it. For the locust covered the whole country and darkened the land. They devoured every plant in the fields and all the fruit on the trees that had survived the hailstorm. Not a single leaf was left on the trees and plants throughout the land of Egypt. Pharaoh quickly summoned Moses and Aaron. I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you, he confessed. Forgive my sin just this once and plead with the Lord your God to take away this death from me. So Moses left Pharaoh's court and pleaded with the Lord. And the Lord responded by shifting the wind and the strong west wind blew the locust into the Red Sea. Not a single locust remained in all the land of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart again, so he refused to let the people go. And then the Lord said to Moses, Lift your hand toward heaven, and the land of Egypt will be covered with a darkness so thick you can feel it. So Moses lifted his hand to the sky, and a deep darkness covered the entire land of Egypt for three days. During all that time, the people could not see each other, and no one moved, but there was light as usual where the people of Israel lived. Finally, Pharaoh called for Moses. Go and worship the Lord, he said, but leave your flocks and herds here. You may even take your little ones with you. No, Moses said, you must provide us with the animals for sacrifices and burnt offerings to the Lord our God. All our livestock must go with us too. Not a hoof can be left behind. You must, we must choose our sacrifices for the Lord our God from among these animals, and we won't know how we are to worship the Lord until we get there. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart once more, and he would not let them go. Get out of here, Pharaoh shouted at Moses. I'm warning you, never come back to see me again. The day you see me, you will die. Very well, Moses said, replied, I will never see your face again. Exodus chapter 11. And then the Lord said to Moses, I will strike Pharaoh and the land of Egypt with one more blow. After that, Pharaoh will let you leave this country. In fact, he will be so eager to get rid of you that he will force you to all to leave. Tell all the Israelite men and women to ask their Egyptian neighbors for articles of silver and gold. Now the Lord had caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the people of Israel, and Moses was considered a very great man in the land of Egypt, respected by Pharaoh's officials and Egyptian people alike. Moses had announced to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, at midnight tonight, I will pass through the heart of Egypt and all the firstborn sons will die in every family in Egypt from the oldest son of Pharaoh who sits on his throne to the oldest son of his lowliest servant girl who grinds the flour. Even the firstborn of all the livestock will die. Then a loud wail, then a loud wail will rise throughout the land of Egypt, a wail like no one has heard before or will ever hear again. But among the Israelites, it will be so peaceful that not even a dog will bark. Then you will know that the Lord makes a distinction between the Egyptians and the Israelites. All the officials of Egypt will run to me and fall to the ground before me. Please leave, they will beg. Hurry and take all your followers with you. Only then will I go. Then, burning with anger, Moses left Pharaoh. Now the Lord had told Moses earlier, Pharaoh will not listen to you, but then I will do even more mighty miracles in the land of Egypt. Moses and Aaron performed these miracles in Pharaoh's presence, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he would not, wouldn't let the Israelites leave the country. While the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord gave the following instructions to Moses and Aaron. From now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Announce to the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, 
Each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice, one animal for each household. If a family is too small to eat a whole animal, let them share with another family in the neighborhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. The animal you select must be a year old male, either a sheep or a goat with no defects. Take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of this first, first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. They are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides, the top of the door frames of the houses where they eat the animal. That same night, they must ro roast the meat over a fire and eat it along, along with bitter salad greens and bread made without yeast. Do not eat any of the meat raw or boiled in water. The whole animal, including the head, legs, and internal organs, must be roasted over a fire. Do not leave any of it until the next morning. Burn whatever is not eaten before morning. These are your instructions for eating this meal. Be fully dressed, wear your sandals, and carry your walking stick in your hand. Eat the meal with urgency, for this is the Lord's Passover. On that night, I will pass through the land of Egypt and strike down every firstborn son and firstborn male animal in the land of Egypt. I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, for I am the Lord. The blood of your doorposts will serve as a sign marking the houses where you are staying. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. This plague of death will not touch you when I strike the land of Egypt. This is a day to remember each year from generation to generation. You must celebrate it as a special festival to the Lord. This is a law for all time. For seven days, the bread you eat must be made without yeast. On the first day of the festival, remove every trace of yeast from your homes. Anyone who eats bread made with yeast during the seven days of the festival will be cut off from the community of Israel. On the first day of the festival, and again on the seventh day, all the people must observe an official day for holy assembly. No work of any kind must may be done on these days except in the preparation of food. Celebrate this festival of unleavened bread, for it will remind you that I have brought you out, brought your forces out of the land of Egypt on this day. The festival will be a permanent law for you. Celebrate this day from generation to generation. The bread you eat must be made without yeast from the evening of the 14th day of the first month until the evening of the 21st day of that month. During those seven days, there must be no trace of yeast in your home. Anyone who eats anything made with yeast during this week will be cut off from the community of Israel. These regulations apply both to foreigners living among you and a native-born Israelites. During those days, you must not eat anything made with yeast. Wherever you live, eat only bread made without yeast. Then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, Go pick out a lamb and a young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin, then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop, hyssop across the top and the side of your door frames of your homes your houses and no one may go out through the door until morning for the Lord will pass through the land to strike down the Egyptians. But when he sees the blood on the top and the sides of the door frame, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. Remember these instructions are a permanent law that you and your descendants must observe forever. When you enter the land, the Lord has promised to you to give you, you will continue to observe this ceremony. Then your children will ask, what does this ceremony mean? And you will reply, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, for he passed over the houses of Israel, of the Israelites in Egypt. And though he struck the Egyptians, he spared our families. When Moses had finished speaking, all the people bowed down to the ground and worshiped. So the people of Israel did just as the Lord had commanded through Moses and Aaron. And that night at midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn sons of the land of Egypt, from the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sat on his throne, to the firstborn son of the prisoner in the dungeon. Even the firstborn of their livestock were killed. Pharaoh and all his officials and all the people of Egypt woke up during the night, and loud wailing was heard throughout the land of Egypt. There was not a single house where someone had not died. Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron during the night. Get out, he ordered. Leave my people. And take the rest of the Israelites with you. Go and worship the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and your herds as you said and be gone. 
go, but bless me as you leave. All the Egyptians urged the people of Israel to get out of the land as quickly as possible, for they thought we will die. The Israelites took their bread bread dough before yeast was added. They wrapped their kneading boards and their cloaks and carried them on their shoulders. And the people of Israel did as Moses had instructed. They asked the Egyptians for clothing and articles of silver and gold. The Lord caused the Egyptians to look favorably on the Israelites, and they gave the Israelites whatever they asked for. So they stripped the Egyptians and their wealth. That night, the people of Israel left Ramesses and started for Succoth. There were about 600,000 men, plus all the women and children. A rabble of non-Israelites went with them, along with the great flocks and herds of livestock. For, for bread, they baked flat cakes from the dough without yeast they had brought from Egypt. It was made without yeast because the people were driven out of Egypt in such a hurry that they had no time to prepare the bread or other food. The people of Israel had lived in Egypt for 430 years. In fact, it was on the last day of the 430th year that all the Lord's forces left the land. On this night, the Lord kept his promise to bring his people out of the land of Egypt. So this night belongs to him, and it must be commemorated every year by all the Israelites from generation to generation. Then the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, these are the instructions for the festival of Passover. No outsiders are allowed to eat the Passover meal. But any slave who has been purchased may eat of it if he has been circumcised. Temporary residents and hired servants may not eat it. Each Passover lamb must be eaten in one house. Do not carry any of its meat outside and do not break any of its bones. The whole community of Israel must celebrate this Passover festival. If there are foreigners living among you, you want to, who want to celebrate the Lord's Passover, let all their males be circumcised. Only then may they celebrate the Passover with you like in any native-born Israelite. But no uncircumcised male may ever eat the Passover meal. This instruction applies to everyone, whether a native-born Israelite or a foreigner living among you. So all the people of Israel followed all the Lord's commands to Moses and Aaron. And on that very day, the Lord brought the people of Israel out of the land of Egypt like an army. All right, so so we uh, you get a glimpse also, um, some very clear instruction as to what God was doing with the Passover and uh, um, giving them the Passover so that they would be have a festival that they would be able to celebrate for generations to come so that their children remembered what the Lord had done in, uh, in passing over them, uh, allowing the death of the angel to pass over. So real quick, just go back in, uh, in Exodus chapter, um, Exodus chapter 12. You know, I, I uh, explained at the very beginning of the, the lesson um, that this was, you know, God, each of the plagues was, was uh, uh, conquering one of these false deities or false gods. And that's what God actually says to them in Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. He says, I will execute judgment against all the gods of Egypt, um, for I am the Lord. And so that's what God was doing there. Um, then also I underlined, um, and he says that in verse 17, uh, it will remind you um, that I brought your forces out of the land of Egypt this day. And he was speaking of this, um, the feast of, of unleavened bread and um, uh, getting, not having yeast uh, was this reminder that, uh, uh, that God had delivered them, brought them out of Egypt, and they didn't even have, uh, they didn't have time to be allowed the bread to rise. And so that's the why the, the no ye yeast, um, it was a, a symbol of how quickly the Lord brought them out of Egypt when he finally um, delivered them. Okay, and so we see there they've got about over, well over a million people because it's 600,000 men that's recorded. And, uh, and the people had lived in Egypt for 430 years. And so, you know, again, uh, because they had lived in Egypt for so long, uh, for generations, many of them had begun to worship these false gods, false deities. And uh, so this whole process is a part of God refining and purging this the false belief out of their hearts and uh, getting them uh, to understand that, that they are to worship him and him alone. All right, so uh, so let's go ahead and pray. Thank you, Lord, for for teaching us. Thank you, God, for uh, giving us understanding that will impact us even as we 
uh, we see Jesus who comes back, who comes and he, he uh, celebrates the Passover meal with his disciples and declares that he is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world, that he has become that perfect Lamb, um, that his shed blood is what delivers us. And God, we thank you for uh, just the, the, the great um, teaching, Lord, that you're doing to doing uh, for us, Lord, helping us to understand um, the bigger picture. And Lord, would you help us to be people who have that bigger picture fully in mind as we, uh, as we live out our faith following you, Lord, and um, help us to uh, just continue to learn and grow deeper and apply these things to our heart and our minds. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you uh, for joining me today. And uh, I hope that uh, if you um, if you have a church, that you make sure that you get into a church sometime today. And if not, uh, obviously, you are welcome to, uh, to come to Providence or you can jump online and uh, join us there. But online is only a, a, you know, a far second choice. We have to be in person with other believers as often as we can and uh, not neglect the assembly. Of, uh, of gathering with other other Christ followers, and so I just want to encourage you to uh, to make sure that you are uh, that you're doing that. All right. Well, God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow as we continue on in our reading. Hope you have a wonderful day.